Everyone's ready? Good morning, everyone. My name is Bernarda Villalona from Villalona, Villalona Law, Law Firm. And here is uh, civil rights attorney Harry Daniels, as well as attorneys Crystal Carey and Chantel Cherry Lassiter, and we represent the family of Devontae Brown. We also have here NAAC President Gerald Griggs, as well as the mom and stepdad of Vincent Truitt, who was also killed by Cobb County police officer, and was also his case presented by this very same district attorney, D.A. Flynn. Today we are here to announce the filing of a federal civil lawsuit in the Northern District of Georgia, Atlanta Division, against Cobb County Police Officer Ian McConnell for the death of unarmed Devontae Brown. Today we'll have a few comments that will be made by first Crystal Carey, who will tell us the filing and the specifics of that lawsuit, as well as additional information I should tell Cherry Lassiter as to what happened on that tragic day at the hands of police officer Ian McConnell. And we will also like to present some words from NAACP President Gerald Griggs as to the handling and presentation of the case against the Cobb County police officer who also killed Vincent Truitt, shot him in the back in August of 2020. Now you will hear from Ms. Carey. Good morning. Again, my name is Crystal Carey from the law office of Harry M. Daniels. Um, our team has filed a federal lawsuit um, in the United States District Court of the Northern um, District of Georgia. On yesterday, uh, we represent Brandy Carr as the next of friend to DB and AB who are minors who is the next of kin to Devontae Brown. And we filed it against Ian McConnell, the officer of Cobb County Police Department. Civil action file number was 1 colon 24-CV-0885. As we all are aware that Officer McConnell shot Devontae Brown um, 12 times. He actually shot five times first seven times first, excuse me, and then paused and shot an additional five times, which three of the shots uh, entered Mr. Brown's face or head area. Two of the shots were in his chest cavity. One was in his neck, and he had uh, gunshot wounds to both of his arms. We filed claims for wrongful death as well as assault and battery, but the most important one was that we filed a claim against Ian McConnell for excessive force under 42 U.S.C. 1983. Um, the facts are as they are. Devontae Brown was boxed in. Um, he was posing no threats to others or officers. He had no way of um, leaving the scene. At, at the point in which he was shot by Mr. McConnell, he was captured. Um, again, it was senseless. We have our complaint again that has been filed on yesterday. If you want to take a look, you definitely can um, look up the file civil case number and see the details of what we filed. Good morning. I'm attorney Chantel Cherry Lassiter with the law office of Harry Daniels out of Atlanta, Georgia, here standing on behalf of representation of Mr. Devontae Brown and the family. The use of deadly force to prevent the escape of all felony suspects, whatever the circumstance, is constitutionally unreasonable. It was constitutionally unreasonable for Ian McConnell to fire 12 shots into a vehicle that was currently posing no threats at the time of the shooting. Devontae Brown had been boxed in with no means of escape. He was boxed in by officers on each side of his vehicle. He wasn't going anywhere. Officer McConnell gave him commands to put his hands up. 
at the time of those commands, the airbags had deployed. Through the vantage point of Officer McConnell, you can tell whether his hands were up or not. At the time, Devontae Brown was shot by Officer McConnell. He was boxed in and posing no threats. He was given instructions to, to raise his hands, and then immediately he was shot 12 rounds into his vehicle, hitting him eight times, striking him eight times. As Attorney Kerry has said, she gave you the locations of those shots. It was constitutionally unreasonable for Devontae Brown to not be with us today. Thank you. Um. Good morning or almost good afternoon. My name is Attorney Harry Daniels, a national civil rights lawyer. We handle these cases all over the United States, and I'm uh, proud to be here uh, with the, the lead attorneys in this case. I was doing a fantastic job. Uh, Chantel Chair Lesh and I, we've handled these cases in North Carolina and other states. Uh, we recently went up to uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, with Ricky Cobb, who was shot and killed by a state trooper. Uh, and that district attorney charged that state trooper murder, uh, as she should. Uh, the same thing should have happened here. Uh, in this case, as Ms. Lasser stated, we're talking about, we're not even necessarily talking about the Constitution, we're talking about the laws of Georgia. Laws of Georgia as relates to when an officer can use deadly force. I know Gerald, a good friend of mine, longtime counsel attorney, have handled all type of cases, murder cases, and also a civil rights attorney. It doesn't matter where a bad shit will start. That's the first thing you got to understand. Because at the end of the day, you look at, at the time of the shooting of uh, Officer McConnell, when he shot uh, uh, Mr. Brown, what was happening at that particular time? Uh, Tennessee versus Gardner, the case that Ms. Lasher has stated, is clear that you cannot shoot a person. Doesn't matter; they commit a felony. Does not matter. It has to, you have to look at the time, at the time of the deadly force is used because you take in consideration once you use deadly force, you are saying the person at that particular time is using force or is an imminent threat to law enforcement or the public. When you look at this video, as Ms. Carey stated, uh, there's no intimate, intimate threat at the time. He was boxed in, he was trapped, he was captured, the vehicle was disabled, airbags deployed. And one of the things you want to look at, and this lawsuit also talks about it, is what a reasonable officer standard would, would, would look like. Well, we had three other officers, right Chantel? Yeah. Who showed you what the reasonable officer standard was. You know what they didn't do? They didn't fire their weapons because in their mind, they believe, at least objectively, that uh, that uh, Mr. Uh, Brown was caught. He was captured. But you had one officer to come on scene who complete the box in. When I say box in, from the front to the right, driver's side, and to the rear, trap, completes the box in. And what he decided to do is get out of the car screaming orders, uh, Mr. Uh, Brown, uh, to put your effing hands up. Uh, then he subsequently shot. Uh, multiple times striking and killing Mr. Brown. Uh, to me, it's, it's, it's clear, it's crystal clear. Uh, I think that when you have, and Bernardo talked talk about it more, when you have people who have uh, a law enforcement, a bad shield and a star, that people kind of lose their common sense uh, of what what is the standard, what's the rule. The rule is that you don't shoot a kill an unarmed person. The rule is you don't shoot a person that's not an imminent threat. doesn't matter who you are. And this lawsuit, hopefully, I will, will uh, bring some change, not just to the Brown family, but for the Truett family as well. And Mr. Griggs, he will talk more about that. But I want to iterate this, and I'm going to get out of the way, and I know these great attorneys are going to come forward, but I'll be remiss to remind you, injustice anywhere, as Dr. King said, it's, it, it, injustice anywhere is a threat of justice everywhere. It doesn't matter uh, where it's at. It doesn't matter if it's in Cobb County. It doesn't matter if it's in Pennsylvania. Uh, injustice anywhere is a threat of justice everywhere. And injustice is a foot not only on the day in question, but injustice with the district attorney not doing their job. And it doesn't matter who you are, what uh, political party you're affiliated with, who elected you. You have one job to do is be an ambassador of justice. And when you do not do it, attorneys as this will call you out. Because at the end of the day, when you run on a campaign to, to be fair, to pursue justice, no matter who it may be you pursuing in the pursuit of justice, and you dare let your duty, we will say something and we will uh, submit uh, to the Attorney General and to the Department of Justice for somebody to come in and try to get justice for these families. That being said, 
bring in the state attorney. I mean, I'm sorry, not state. He's an attorney in the state. The state president, Gerald Grizz at NWCP, to speak more about the Truett and also about this case. Appreciate you. Attorney Gerald Griggs, G-E-R-A-L-D-G-R-I-G-G-S, president of the Georgia State Conference of the NAACP. Uh, I'm tired of standing out in front of this courthouse because there seems to be a reoccurrence of the lack of justice and transparency. As we stand with the Brown family, we remember all the other families in Cobb County that have been limited in justice because of the actions of the current district attorney. In this particular case, like in Vincent's case, he presented it to a civil grand jury. That's not enough. Present it to a criminal grand jury. Allow them to make the determination of whether Georgia law was violated. In this case, as well as Vincent's case back in August of 2020, we believe it was clear that criminal laws were violated. So it's never too late for District Attorney Flynn Brody to make good on his campaign promises to seek justice for everyone. Everybody not just to rubber stamp the actions of law enforcement. You know, we called upon him back in 2020, 2021, to do the right thing with regard to these police involved cases. He said there was a procedure in Georgia that he had to follow. No other district attorney in Georgia submits these cases to a civil grand jury for a recommendation to present it to a criminal grand jury. Now we've learned the difference between civil grand juries and criminal grand juries. We need look no further than down in Fulton County with the Trump uh, election interference case where the case was initially presented to a civil grand jury and then presented to a criminal grand jury. We need to present the Brown case, the Truett case to criminal grand juries like all of the other 58 district attorneys throughout this state, not play games and hide from justice. You also need to be transparent with these families about why when there's evidence, when there's a video of a man that poses no significant threat, when there's a video of a 17 year old running away who shot in his back twice when he's not an imminent threat to anyone, why in Cobb County, there seems to be a delay in justice. So on behalf of the NAACP, we are calling on this district attorney to do what's right, present these cases to the citizens of Cobb County in a criminal setting with a proposed indictment and watch them come back with indictments. And then the citizens of this county can determine in a courtroom whether or not the actions of these law enforcement officers violated the public trust. It's real simple. Two shots in the back, how you justify that? How do you justify a man who's boxed in who poses no threat, being shot as many times as he was shot, but then you don't present it to a criminal grand jury. You know, I've been practicing law in this state a long time. I've said in many, many murder cases with less evidence, it's time for law enforcement to be held to the same standard as every other citizen of Georgia. And that's what the Georgia NAACP is calling on. So present these cases to a criminal grand jury and let's have justice reign in Cobb County. As I stated before, Devontae Brown should be here today. Vincent Truitt should be here today. Both of these men killed at the hands of Cobb County police. But not only were their families failed on the day that they lost their loved one, but they were also failed by the very district attorney who represents them and all of us. District Attorney Flynn Brody, I submit to you, is botching these presentations to the grand jury by deciding, one, to present the case to a grand jury for the simple recommendation of whether further action should be taken or no further action to be taken. In my opinion, is so he can hide behind that decision. But not forgetting that there are prosecutors, former prosecutors like myself, who's a prosecutor for 16 years, that knows how a case is presented to the grand jury, that knows how you can present a narrative where you can get a no further action, where you can get a no true bill. And that's exactly what happened in the case in the presentation into the death of Devontae Brown at the hands of Ian McConnell. 
as I have the grand jury transcript of exactly how it was presented, what was said, what wasn't said, how Devontae Brown was characterized, how Ian McConnell was characterized, and the closing argument that was given right before the vote was given to that grand jury. I submit to you the irony of all this is that I, as we stand here before you discussing Devontae Brown and DA Flynn Brody, the very same assistant district attorney who presented the case into the death of Devontae Brown is the same district attorney, assistant district attorney, who presented the case to the grand jury having to deal with Vincent Truitt. I call on DA Flynn Brody to release that grand jury transcript for transparency, for us to see exactly what was said, what wasn't said, how was it said to those grand jurors for them to vote for no further action. I'm at the point, ladies and gentlemen, that I think DA Flynn Brody shouldn't even be allowed to present cases having to deal with those that die at the hands of police officers because he cannot be trusted. We call on the Attorney General Carr to appoint a special prosecutor in these matters to look into these investigations, to present these cases to grand juries in a fair and impartial matter because the trust into DA Flynn Brody, who was elected by all of you, is no longer there. I'll take it a step further. What I think should happen here in the state of Georgia, that legislators, legislator should put a law in place that any death at the hands of law enforcement, of the police department, should be investigated and prosecuted by the attorney general's office. Because this appearance of impropriety is so clear, the evidence of impropriety is so clear that this DA can't be trusted and who knows what else is going on around the state of Georgia. We've submitted a letter to the Department of Justice, to Kristen Clark, to look into this investigation and how it was handled and also to investigate whether the death of Devontae Brown was racially motivated. We also submitted a letter and requested a meeting with Attorney General Carr to discuss this presentation to this grand jury and also the investigation. We asked the both of them to look into Devontae Brown, his death, and the death of Vincent Truitt. I thank all of you for appearing here today to cover this because a death here in Cobb County, the injustice here in Cobb County is not just to these families, but to all of you as citizens of Cobb County and as residents of Georgia. We'll take any questions. Before, before you take any questions, I want to uh, Mrs. Truett's mom to come up. I would like to say something on behalf of uh, her son and family. Good. 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 Yes, I am the proud mother of Vincent DiMario Truitt, who was shot in his back twice by Officer Max Hamilton Carnell, not once but twice, a day before my birthday. My baby took his last breath. As parents who experience the devastating loss of a child to the hands of those sworn to serve and protect. We stand with the Brown family. It is with a sense of deep concern and frustration regarding the injustice of the judicial, judicial system. This is a painful reality that demands urgent attention. The amount of families not only grieving, but fighting a fight of their lives are greater than the two families you see here. This type of wrongdoing has been going on for far too long. 
It's time to hold those accountable and necessary reforms implemented to prevent such tragedies from reoccurring. We want justice for our children. You know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you know, yesterday, I was down in Camden County. Uh, a lot of you guys covered uh, the shooting of uh, Leonard Kerr. And one thing uh, that that stood out to me was Leonard Kerr's mother, Mary Kerr, who who fought for 16 years when her son was wrongfully incarcerated in the state of Florida. Uh, a mother love don't go unnoticed. Uh, no matter what a district court of say and the federal courts, she's gonna continue to fight for her son and she gave him life and continue to fight for him even in his death. Uh, to look at these cases, the Brown case and the Truett case, it is, it is, and I'm off of almost a loss of words, that this young man running, running, if somebody taking flight, Gerald, that means they running away, they scared. And get, shoot, and get shot in the back by a police officer. Have it been me or anybody else? I don't know what they jake jail at, or I'm sure you'll be in it. Or at least, at minimum, Bernada, the case be presented to a criminal grand jury. For a vote of an indictment. At minimum. And for the Mr. Brown case, I mean, I, he was captured, caught. There was nowhere else he can go. Um, and the reason why I believe that Ian McConnell was emboldened to pull that, pull that trigger to kill Mr. Brown because in the Truett case, they did nothing. And you see how that continue to repeat itself. If you do nothing here, or you do nothing in this case, who knows who's next? That's why we ask for accountability, transparency, and justice. Not just for the, the Truett family, not just for the Brown family, but for your family, for my family. With that being said, I have some questions. Uh, as they come in, we'll uh, try our best to ask some questions. Yeah. Okay, so August of 2020, Vincent DeMario Truitt was killed in South Cobb County uh, by a police officer uh, who is still employed uh, by the Cobb County Police Department. Uh, the district attorney presented the case to a civil grand jury who recommended no further action, and thus the case was closed. And so that officer still works for the Cobb County Police Department, and we believe as Attorney Daniels has said, it has emboldened other officers to continue such behavior. So it's continuing in Cobb County. And the reason why the Truett family wants to stand with the Brown family is they were shocked that another incident had occurred after promises of transparency and change and training and all those things were made. And then there's another shooting. So uh, it has not been addressed by Cobb County. It's not been addressed by this district attorney appropriately, and so something has to happen. Are you able to elaborate on the circumstances that led up to the incident involving Vincent Truitt? I'm just not familiar, and I may, others may not be any background. With you. Okay, so there was a call put out for a stolen vehicle uh, on, um, what was that, Six Flags Parkway. Police officers got behind the vehicle, uh, attempted to box the vehicle in. Vehicle went, and Vincent was the passenger, not the driver in the vehicle. The vehicle went behind a warehouse uh, in Cobb County where it was ultimately pit maneuvered. Vehicle swung around, the door opened, the driver got out, ran. Uh, Vincent got out the vehicle, ran. He took about three steps and was shot in his back twice. Uh, he fell to the ground. The officer came over and Vincent asked him, why'd you shoot me? He said, because you had a gun. He said, no, I didn't. Then, of course, he starts to, to agonize in pain. All this is caught on body-worn cameras, okay, and it took... 90 some odd days to get the body worn camera released. And so once we got the body worn camera, of course, we filed a lawsuit, uh, had contact with the district attorney's office, met with uh, the Department of Justice here in Atlanta to address these issues. And so far, nothing has been addressed appropriately. Do you believe both of these instances were racially motivated? Yes, I do believe both incidents were racially motivated. And I think that there's a pattern in practice uh, in Cobb County that needs to be addressed by the Department of Justice. Uh, Gerald. 
have been calls for legislation to be passed for some time now. Um, where does it stand right now with the state uh, legislature? Where there, do those efforts stand? There are two bills, one from this year and one from last year, uh, that possibly could cross over tomorrow. Um, we're hopeful. Uh, but I think at this point we need federal intervention because there seems to be a continual problem in Georgia appropriately dealing with these cases. I mean, from Rayshard Brooks to Vincent Truitt to now Mr. Brown, there's a pattern here. Now, of course, Rayshard Brooks was Atlanta police. We're talking about Cobb County. But there's an issue in law enforcement in the entire state. What specific bills are you referring to that you have? There's one that, as, um, as she stated, would mandate a uh, special prosecutor to be assigned in those cases. That is from last year. That's the law enforcement accountability bill that was introduced uh, by Sandra Scott. And then this year, um, there is a bill that was just introduced after Johnny Holloman, which was another case uh, that hopefully will cross over tomorrow. So those are the two bills that I know of. There may be others. And, and one thing that's glaring that uh, the appearance of conflict of interest, I mean, you're talking about the Cobb County Police are the prosecuting officers for the Cobb County District Attorney's Office. That's why when you have police involved shootings, the Georgia Bureau Investigation come in because you don't want the police policing themselves. The same thing should apply to who's prosecuting. I mean, at one minute you have Ian McConnell have 10 cases pending in your office for prosecution. And if you prosecute him, you undermine those cases. So it's a conflict of interest. And that's why a special prosecutors come in or be appointed to prosecute these cases to look further as to whether criminal charges or at least an indictment should be presented. You all said Mr. Brown was unarmed, but did he in fact have a gun in the vehicle? And what do you say to the thought that the vehicle itself is used as a weapon in the officer's and, and that's a great question. Mr. Brown was unarmed. He didn't have a weapon at the time. So if I have a weapon on this bush, I don't, I'm unarmed. I don't have a weapon. Uh, the vehicle, and, and simply to the response, was the vehicle used as a weapon? It was not. The vehicle can be used as a weapon, but at the time of the shooting, it's not. It was completely uh, boxed in. Uh, it was all police officers were surrounding it, and at that time, it was no imminent threat. So, and you got to be mindful. the The Cobb County policy policy, the Cobb County Police Department policy, said you should not shoot into a moving vehicle unless the person inside the vehicle is using deadly force or a occupant using deadly force. The reason why, Angelique, you don't, you, you don't shoot into a moving vehicle, because if you shoot a vehicle that's moving, you create an unguided missile. So if you have a group of kids across the street, you can't control it. But in this situation, it was blocked in. Small compact car blocked in by 2,000 pound plus police cruisers. It wasn't going anywhere. It was completely disabled. Look at the video. Look at the tires, the airbag. He was trapped. In fact, the other officers that standing there watching. Eventually, Mr. Brown, he could give up. But regardless of what he was doing before, at the moment, at the time, he was not an enemy threat to police or the public. And in the state of Georgia, or at least I thought in the state of Georgia, maybe not in Cobb County, you cannot shoot a person and kill them with no enemy threat to police or others. That's your question. That is, cor that's, that is incorrect. DA Flynn Brody is incorrect in his statings. The GBI has informed us that they concluded their investigation in September of 2023. That is after the presentation to the grand jury. But either way, aside from that, how does it account for you not presenting the policy to the grand jury for their consideration? The policy of not shooting into a moving vehicle, the complete policy as to a vehicle pursuit, still regardless whether the investigation was concluded or not, that does not answer or stop 
you from presenting the policy to the grand jury, especially when a grand juror asked about that policy. And in your opinion, you gave your opinion as to the facts about that policy, and it was incomplete. And, and, and looking at the, the, the transcript, let me see the transcript. I mean, any presentation when you're trying to move for a true bill, because if you are presenting a case to a criminal grand jury, you believe that it is enough to move forward. The grand jury make the decision. But in this civil presentment to the civil grand jury, the district attorney is talking about a case, talk, reading case opinion, and it's clearly slanted away from moving forward. That's not how it's done. You're supposed to be transparent, uh, non-biased, to give it to these group of people and give them what they asked for, like the policy, because I believe the policy would have been very, uh, uh, made a big difference because now you telling me, well, he didn't, Ian McConnell didn't necessarily do anything wrong, but according to the Cobb County Police Department policy, that's different. So who do we believe? And that calls in question where maybe, Gerald, we need to present this to a criminal grand jury and let them decide. In, the, in, in, in this case, in the Brown case, and, and my heart breaks for this family equally as the Brown family, this kid's running away. You know, I think about my child, you know, afraid, running. And, and, and if it can happen to 17 year old, my daughter's 17 years old. It can happen to him, it can happen to anybody. We have to, we gotta do something. The DA must do something. You know, and, and, and I say this, you know, Cobb County is a uh, democracy. And Gerald, last time they, I remember, they got a, they got a vote. And, and you know, the people will speak. And they're, they're, your job is to be a representative for the people of Cobb County. Any other questions? Matt, you have any questions? I want to say, I'm guessing they didn't have any other officers present testify as why they didn't shoot. Well, I believe they had other officers testify, but the video. They didn't have any officers testify. I'm they had no other officers testifying in the Brown case. I'm, Brown case, I'm sorry, or the Truett case. But how do you know that? And, so, in, so. In answering that question, can you also say that um, it uh, referenced the fact that the DBI investigator was the one that testified, not the evidence in the DBI case? That's right. Yeah. So, so here's what is the interesting thing about police-involved incidents with criminal grand juries. In Georgia, the officer has the absolute right to be at the grand jury and to testify. So in both of these cases, because it was presented to a civil grand jury, there was no officer testimony. And so it allows, and again, I said, this is the only district attorney in Georgia that does it this way. Every other district attorney presents it to a criminal grand jury. They have to give notice to the officer. The officer gets an opportunity to present evidence and the grand jury gets to get a full understanding of what happened my question is why in georgia is there only one district attorney doing it this way you know I, i've been watching mr brody for three and a half years and i've yet to see him indict a police officer for a police involved case in those three and a half years i wonder if it's the policy that he's using all right in the presentation to the grand jury having to deal with the death of Devontae Brown, only one person testified. I don't even want to call it a witness because it was a GBI agent who testified as to his investigation itself. Ian McConnell did not testify. Neither did any of the officers that were on the scene or any of the civilians that were also witnesses on the scene. This case was presented solely with the testimony of a GBI agent. The, the, the ADA testified, it seemed like he was testifying not to have the case to move forward. All right, with that being said, do uh, you have any other questions? All right, thank you guys. Uh, we'll keep you updated. Like I said, this case has been filed in Northern District of Georgia. Uh, let me see the lawsuit.